In the last lesson, we sent a confirmation email to our users. In this lesson, we are going to validate that confirmation token. So let's first send a confirmation email. I have already create, uh, created a 10 minute email here and let's send it. All right. First of all, let's fix this bug ID is null. I think we are not returning the ID here in our reducer. So let's go to our sign up reducer and here I am doing low dash pick name and email. I also want the ID. All right. So here we are sending the confirmation email. Let's go there. Services email configuration and send in the email. Here also I noticed that we are we don't have the ID in the use object. We should update this to send confirmation email and pass the registered users. This object has the ID and not this object. Because the ID is generated once we save the record to the MongoDB. So let's pass register user. Okay now everything works fine let's now create a mutation to confirm our uh, confirmation token let's go here create a mutation called confirm email it's going to expect the token so token is going to be a string and it is required the return type is going to be a boolean so it's going to say whether it's true or false and it is also required okay all right, so now let's go to our resolvers and write our resolver. The index.js is getting pretty long. I think we should move our queries and mutations to separate files, but let's do that in a different lesson. So I'm going to use async confirm email. And first argument is the parent, we don't want it. And the next, we're going to get the token from the payload. And after that, we have in JWT a, a method called verify, where we can verify the token that we sent. Remember that we already know the JW secret key in our server. So it's going to use this JW ENV secret key into order to verify the token. So let's write the code. Of course, we need to put this in a try catch because if it fails, it's going to throw an error and we want to catch that. So if we have an invalid token, it's going to throw an error. So we are going to say return false if the token is invalid. If not, let's do const very validate or verify token equals to JWT verify method. And here we need to pass in the token that the client sent us and of course the secret key env dot jw secret key cool i'll put the equal sign here and we are good and we'll return the let's return true because we know that if it doesn't throw an exception we know that the verified token is verified okay the server part is done i think uh let's go check it out in our uh apollo server playground Okay, we have a token. Uh, I think we should get an email. Yes, we have that. Let's copy this. Yeah, let's copy it from here. And let's do a mutation. Mutation, conf, validate, validate token. And we'll use our confirm why isn't it populating let's do it a refresh confirm email okay and it needs a token so i'm going to pass in the token and it's going to give us a boolean so i no need to pass anything uh to ask for anything it's going to return true or false let's send it yeah it does say true so this is valid so let's change one character or two and send it again it says false correct all right now let's go to our Nux server or next application and uh you create a raw view called confirm 
and use our next JS application to get the token and pass it to our GraphQL API and we will get it validated with its true or false and then show a message in our in our uh, next application so first thing is first let's create a folder called confirmation because that's how next routing works and let's create a file called underscore token dot view okay let's create first of all a template template why is it not a token Okay. We'll give it a name, confirmation email. We'll give it, we'll do a h1 tag saying uh, if if we have the we have a verified token, I will say you have confirmed your email address. Okay. So now I'm going to use the lifecycle hook async data. So all of this happens in the server. Um, we will get the params object to get the params and the app object. The app object is needed to get the Apple client and then send the mutation. The params object will have the route parameters, the token. So let's do const token from params and let's create our mutation so we'll name it is verified or is valid we'll do await of course when doing await we have to put async here we'll do app apple provider default client mutate and here we'll have a mutation and we would need the gql to write our query so let's import that import gql from uh, graphql tag okay so let's go to our mutation in the inside here we'll do mutation we would want the token and that should be a string and should be required the same thing that we have over here in our schema we said a token string that is required so we have to put it here like that uh, next we use the confirm email mutation and pass in the token Okay, and in variables, we'll do token. Okay, so since this is the same name, we can do that, and we'll return. We have to return uh, the value. So let's do return is verified data or is valid dot data because in um, the GraphQL returns the values inside a data key. Okay, once we actually do this, we have uh, a data called confirm email. So we if confirm email is true, we show this. If not, we don't show anything. Okay, so let's go here and do a refresh. Oh, mutation is not a function. This has to be mute. Mutate, sorry. Yes, you have a confirm your email address. And let's change something here. And it's nothing there. So it failed. Okay. Yeah, that's it. We have verified our confirmation token. What also we can do is uh, once we have the ID, we can actually. Uh, we can actually find the user so uh, since in the sign method here we added the ID so when we verify this or do JW to verify we will get the ID so we can get the user's ID I'm going to send the request again but because I had a, we had a mistake that the ID was not there 
um let's go back go back just ten minute email let's create and get this add it here okay it's the same email address uh let's refresh delete this new user come back here and send it again sign up okay we would get the email address oh no it expired damn it that's 71 register user again the refresh yeah we have the email now i will go to apple server and do a console log of the verify token so we can actually see what is inside there so let's click on the link yes yeah, so you have confirmed your emails that means this is a valid token and in the console we can see let me scroll up a bit we can see the id so this is the id of the user we can check that out in con the compass the compass yeah this is the id we have yeah three to one d and this is three to one d all right so now you know how to validate the confirmation token that is inside the email in the next lesson let's clean up this thing i don't want to write a huge index file with all the mutations and queries so let's separate these queries and mutations into separate files and just clean up things around okay okay thank you for watching please do subscribe and give it a thumbs up if you liked it have a good day take care bye